Our Droidica breakdown video is one of my favorite that I've made for this channel, but I forgot one very important question, and a lot of you guys have been asking about it in the comments. So let's finally solve this mystery. What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is going to answer the question, how does a Droidica shoot out of its shields? But as I was writing this script, I realized that it answers some other important questions too. Like how did the Death Star 2 fire with its shields up? And for that matter, how do starfighters and capital ships all fire out of their own shields? Shields up! And that led to, why can't you fire out of your own personal shield? I believe a single answer solves all of these problems at once. In fact, they are each important clues to solving this mystery. But let's start with the basics. Most shields are supposed to prevent a certain type of thing from getting in, but that normally works both ways. This gets into one of the most complicated and really inconsistently shown and not really thought out parts of Star Wars lore. But fear not, we don't have to wade through that bantha poodoo for this video. Suffice it to say that ray shields stop energy weapons like blasters and laser cannons, and particle shields stop solid matter, like proton torpedoes and missiles. The Droidica shield stops both, just like the Gungan shield, except if that object is moving slow enough. That is why the B-1 battle droids could walk through those big purple shields on Naboo, but the rounds fired by the AATs could not. Labyrinth of Evil states that the Droidica shield is, quote, deflecting or absorbing virtually any manner of energy or projectile fire up to the level of a light artillery bolt. While the Episode 1 Visual Dictionary tells us that the shield blocks both lightsabers and physical attacks. So you can't chop it in half with your vibro staff or shoot it with a slug thrower. But no source, canon, or legends actually directly answers how the Droidica is able to shoot out of its own shields. Why doesn't it just bounce around inside? Well, to answer this, we will do a frame-by-frame -frame analysis of this thing in action, and I'll go over a bunch of different theories. You'll tell me which one you like best, or if you can expand on them, or have your own theory on how it works. The first is the simplest, in that it doesn't shoot out of its own shields. The shield could be temporarily turned off at the exact millisecond that the blaster bolts are generated. The shield, droid brain, and blasters are of course all in the same unit, so coordinating this action precisely shouldn't be that hard for a droid. You can modify this theory by just saying that the whole shield didn't have to be taken down, just weakened at the area right around the blaster barrel just as it was about to be fired. This concept is really similar to what you find on fighter planes, called an interrupter gear or a gun synchronizer. Ever wonder how it is that planes of the World War eras seem to be shooting through their own propellers? Well, it's actually this amazing piece of engineering. I actually found a clip that explains and shows how it all works, so just have a listen. This completes the synchronizer assembly and makes it possible for each propeller revolution to set off a firing sequence, tripping the trigger and firing a round of ammunition. In essence, the synchronizer is an engine-driven triggering device. She says that the rotation of the propeller is what actually makes the gun fire, and of course it only works if perfectly calculated. To our eyes, looking at a propeller on a plane that's going full speed, the propeller looks like a single disc. You can't see the blades, and likewise, if the shield was coming down for just a split second, you wouldn't be able to see that change. The Rebel's shield on Hoth was taken down to allow the ion shots to pass through. Prepare to open shield. And it isn't clear, but this is probably what was done when the Death Star fired as well. The Endor shield generator was still up and running when it opened fire, so this may be evidence towards the ability for a shield to sort of flicker for just a fraction of a second at the exact moment of firing, or like I said, some sort of weakening of the shield in that area. The Death Star could certainly overpower its own shields. It must be able to in order to overpower any planetary shield in the galaxy, but this would also be an enormous waste of your own energy to have your weapons overpowering your own shields. This likely would have blown out your shield generators as soon as you fired. So the Death Star 2, if not also the Death Star 1, could be thought of as shooting through their own shields. If the shield does not work like the gun synchronizer technology, then there's another theory that perhaps the blaster bolts themselves are generated at a certain frequency or energy arrangement that allows them to pass through the shields. You could say that this would allow you to bounce them right back at the droidica, which would pass right through and hit them. Which definitely can't be an option, or else the Jedi would have made quick work of them. But perhaps when the bolt is hit by the lightsaber, its frequency slash energy makeup is altered, essentially altering the key or code that lets it through, and thus it can no longer pass through the shield. I think this theory that the bolts have a sort of phase or frequency does make a lot of sense. Again, all the parts needed to do this are right there in the same droid body, so there's no reason to think it can't do this. This theory could also explain what happens to the Death Stars, and kind of what we see with almost every starfighter as well. 
you often hear pilots say things like, your deflectors on double front. And then they proceed to fire out, through their own shields. This should be as equally confusing as our destroyer dilemma, and I guess the only way to solve it is with those same two options. Either some device like a synchronizer is timing those shots perfectly with an opening in the starfighter shields, an opening that would be so near impossible for an enemy to time that they effectively can't shoot through, or the shield generators in things like capital ships, the Death Stars, Starfighters, and the Droidica are all integrated with the weapon systems in order to ensure that a unique phase or frequency makes up the bolt that is fired. Interestingly, when an individual dons a personal shield, they create a bubble just like the Droidica. In fact, the lore on these seen in Battlefront is that they were developed directly from the Droidica's incredibly compact and efficient shield generator. But you cannot fire out of this shield. This seems to be inconsistent, but it actually makes a lot of sense if the synchronizer or phase slash frequency theory are true, because your blaster is not connected to your shield generator. There's nothing connecting the weaponry to the shield to make sure it's at the same frequency. Perhaps if there was some sort of device that could be worn like a backpack, that contained a personal shield generator linked to, let's say, a Z6 rotary cannon, then you could be protected while firing out, just like a droidica. And Thorn would still be with us. That death's on you, uncreative Republic weapon engineers. But there's one more very interesting theory that I want to bring up, which also essentially is saying that it isn't shooting through the shields at all. If you look close in this frame, you'll see that the very tip of the barrels are sticking out through the shield. This is true in many other scenes, and although there are some scenes where you can't tell if it is sticking out, you also can't tell for sure if it is just firing from inside. What really helps this theory is that there are scenes in the Clone Wars where the tips are definitely outside as well. This makes me think that this may not just be a coincidence, that perhaps the artists involved in this are keeping that a feature. Either through Lucasfilm internal lore that for some reason hasn't been explicitly stated in the books, or these particular Clone Wars animators just noticed this about the Droidicas in Episode 1 and kept it in. Or, even cooler, the artist really cared about this question, and this is the solution they agreed with, so they iterated it again in the Clone Wars just to solidify it. This really would be a simple and efficient answer to this more than a decade-long discussion, but there are some problems with it. Other shots in the Clone Wars don't make this clear. In fact, some kinda do seem like they're firing from behind the shield. And in this clip from Rebels, it definitely seems like the entire blaster arm is well inside of the bubble. Even if we ignore the Rebels depiction, like I said, there are a couple shots in Episode 1 that we simply can't be sure of. It definitely isn't clear, and sometimes it sticks out way more than it has to. It may just be that while in combat, the arm is moving in and out of the shield all the time, sometimes firing outside, sometimes firing from within the shield. My personal opinion is that it does not have to be outside of the shield to fire. I think that if we consider the fact that starfighters, capital ships, and even the Death Star can fire from out of their own shields, then it's something like the gun synchronization in old fighter planes, firing through imperceptible openings in the shield, or the shield generators and weaponry are phased in a way that they don't interact with each other. I think what really helps this theory is that the other two times we see that a shield has to be completely lowered in order to fire are when the weapon and shield generators are not in the same system, namely the ion cannon and shield generator on Hoth, and when you have a personal shield generator and your handheld blaster in Battlefront. With capital ships, starfighters, droidicas, and death stars, they have computers, shields, and weapons that are all integrated, all in the same system and could be working together to solve this problem. You could imagine that understanding the ever-changing shield phase or frequency would be one of the most important codes to crack in Star Wars Warfare. If you could solve this, you could essentially shoot through an enemy shield. At that point, it wouldn't just be about the damage you inflicted, but that you quickly turn fear into an ally, as enemy commanders either surrender, or make panic decisions that quicken their defeat. I think the fact that we don't see this is simply because the phase of the weaponry and shield can be easily and constantly changed by the very unit that creates those weapons and the shield. If you crack that code at this very second, by the next millisecond the frequency could be totally different. Your code cracking ability would always be slower than the shield generator can change its phase. But what do you guys think about this? Which one of these theories do you think best explains what is going on? And do you think that a different system is working in the droidica as opposed to what we see in the starships and capital ships? Like, do you think that the droids' weapons just stick out of the shields, but maybe the ships use this phase or frequency method? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways to support this channel without it costing you a thing, or check out our Patreon, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, 
Remember, stuff like this is what being a meta nerd is all about. And the Force will be with you, always.